All right, so caching files with a service worker. You've done promises, you've done fetch, you've built a service worker. You know, we've talked about very basic caching using a simple approach with a list of static files. You've done things with SW Precache to write a service worker. But what if you need to do more complicated things? What if you need to get into the cache API directly? Let's go ahead and walk through that. So what is the cache interface? It's basically a map. So it's it actually technically called the cache interface. It doesn't really even have a name. We'll call it the cache API or the cache interface. Um, so you'll hear me use the word interchangeably, but there's no real name for it. So it's a map of assets with a URL. It's a map of uh, requests to responses. So you saw it yesterday. I called ca um, match, cache matches, handed it a request, and it came back with, here's the item it matches. But let's say you want to do wild carding. For example, SW Toolbox does wild carding. How does it do it? It does it by getting all the keys <coughs> and then matching directly, match doing its own match. So typical API you might expect. So you've seen add all takes a list of items. Add adds one request or a or URL, either one. Um, you can do a put with an actual request object and a response. You can also delete a request, and there's an op optional options on there. You can ask for all the keys, um, I optionally matching a request. You can call match with a single request to get a single result out. Or you can do a match all, which will take a request and give you everything that matches. Usually what match all does is you give it a request, and it gives you everything under that path. Now, there is more than one cache. So self.caches will actually have a collection of cache objects. So the rule yesterday that we said is on install in the service worker, build the cache and load your initial stuff. On activates, when you update the cache, you add anything new, you remove anything. Uh, and on fetch, you can do the retrieve from cache network database. So this is the easiest sort of minimal way to do things. But you do need to pay attention to this rule on install. Don't delete things. Only, only add things on install. You can delete them on activate. Thing has almost no range today, so we'll just do this. So on install, uh, the example of caching the application shell. So the service worker fires an install event. You grab everything in the network, jam it in the cache, and then you get to activate. That's a review from yesterday, really. <coughs> Here's how we wrote it yesterday with a couple of extra changes. Um, so listen for the install. Wait until remember that to keep things alive. Open the cache, add all, and then here's a new one, self.skip waiting. So remember that if I have an existing service worker and I load a new one, the new one doesn't take over until all of the existing ones have been, all those windows or tabs have been closed. But if I call skip waiting, this forces the new service worker to take over for everyone. So a lot of times, this is much nicer than asking the user to, to do a reload. Just do self.skip waiting. Just be aware that if the service worker functionality has changed dramatically, you might not want to do that because you don't, may not want the app to change its behavior suddenly without a reload. <coughs> On activate, and I'm, I'm sorry, this is like I test, I test uh, font here. Um, so remove outdated caches on activate. Get all of the keys, and then have the current cache name. And if the key doesn't match the current cache name, so if the cache has a different name, then just go ahead and delete it. Pretty simple. And then self.clients.claim basically says, OK, I want to update all of my clients. So everything, everything in the, um, every service worker that you're running, all your children, catch up with the current, the current cache. Now, with network fallback, we talked about this yesterday. Grab it from the cache, get it from the network if you can't. This is what the code typically looks like. So match, get the response. If I have the response, return it. If not, do a fresh fetch. Easy. <coughs> Let's say that we want to do the get from the network and put a copy in the cache. Then you have to do something special. So each response, when you get it, can only be read once. They're basically designed to be read by a single thread at a single time. 
And they have a little cursor inside of them, so you can't have multiple readers on it. So what you do is, before you put it in the cache, you make a copy of the response, so you clone it. Clone is not special on response. This is the regular object.clone function. But it'll duplicate the internal state of the response so that you can put it in the cache. Whenever the cache gives you back a response, it's actually giving you a clone of the original. And the response generally points to shared data in memory that's read-only. So cloning off a response does not bloat the memory out. So on user interaction, the user clicks. Maybe I want to go get something from the cache. So uh, there's some people that do like dynamic loading based on when the user performs actions. So in this case, when they click on an article, um, first off, I'm going to block the default action for this event. I'm going to get my article ID and then go to the server. Well, I'm first going to open a cache and give it the name of the article. So let's say that somebody selects an article from a list. Maybe they favorite it. And we want to grab all of the resources for just that article. So I'm going to put all of those resources together in a cache that's named after the article so that if the user ever goes in unfavorites or I need to manage memory, I can delete that cache and make sure that I've removed just that bundle of items. So I'll name it after the article <coughs> and then function cache. Um, I'm going to go to the server and say, give me a list of URLs. Let's say that the server can generate a list in JSON of all of the assets required for this page. So then you take that list of assets, you unpack the JSON, and then do an add all with all the URLs. That's the recommended technique if you're doing dynamic loading, is to have basically the server generate a manifest for you, and then you initiate a pull of everything that you need. Now, serving from the cache, we talked about these yesterday, these different techniques. And these techniques are actually in, um, they're actually in Toolbox. But the code looks like this. So a cache falling back to the network you've seen, match it, return the response, or go fetch it. Network falling back to the cache, ah, right, fetch it, and if it fetch fails, this says fetch and then catch. You actually need an intermediate layer, intermediate layer in here to check OK. Um, and if that doesn't work, then go ahead and do a caches match on the event request. Cache the network example. Sorry. Um, right. Do a fetch. If we get it, pull the JSON, set a global flag for network data received. Otherwise, Check the cache. If we have it, use it. If we don't have the data, go ahead and update the page, because we don't want to overwrite the existing data. And otherwise, go ahead and hit the network. And the generic fallback. This case is really interesting. This is the last one you do in the lab. So what happens if I go to the service worker? Maybe I'm dynamically loading content. Maybe I'm pulling pages off the web, or I'm pulling products out of an e-commerce system. And somebody goes to a URL that, doesn't ex that you can't reach because you're offline. What do you do? <coughs> well, if it's an HTML request, maybe what you do is have logic in the service worker. Whoops. Have logic in the service worker that says, OK, I can't reach the cache. I can't reach the network. So I'm going to go to the cache and get an alternate page that says, I'm offline. Here's what you can do. So return a clean page. And you could do this with HTML. You could do this with JavaScript. You could do it with CSS. Basically, you have logic in here that says, OK, if I can't find something of that type, here's some fallback objects I can load from the cache. And so that's what this would look like. If I don't have it, um, return caches.match offline. And we've already looked at dumping the outdated caches. So there's the list of resources. And here's the lab. So we're basically going to have you build manually a lot of the stuff you were doing with Toolbox yesterday. But the interesting one is responding to network errors with an offline page. That'll be a new technique for you. So go ahead and start the fetch lab, and I'll be back with you in about half an hour.